Uh, I'm ready. You're ready to start. So this is the beginning of your eight minutes, Team Ninjas. Go ahead. Hello, Starting now. Name, hello, my name is Dimitris Tulis from the Team Newtonian Ninjas, and I will be presenting you, to you problem number one, chemical countdown. The statement is, if solutions of potassium permanganate, oxalic acid, and sulfuric acid is, are mixed, they mix these colors after a given time interval. Is it possible to adjust the amount of reagents so that they mix these colors after the time interval specified by your opponent at a science fight? Theory. Uh, the reaction that we are studying here is a reduction-oxidation reaction that can be shortened to redox. Then there are uh, reactions that involve the transfer of electrons from one atom to another, so the oxidation number of the atoms partaking changes. Uh, our reagents, the potassium permanganate. It is a violet-colored uh, crystalline salt that is commonly used as a strong oxidizing agent. It is soluble in water, giving potassium and permanganate ions. The oxalic acid. It is the simplest decarboxylic acid. It is a white crystalline substance that is soluble in water. It is commonly used as a reducing agent. And the sulfuric acid, it is a colorless, odorless, viscous min uh, mineral acid that can be mixed with water. It is dehydrating and corrosive. Our reaction, we have two potassium permanganates plus five oxalic acid plus three sulfuric acid that, that gives out these products. The potassium permanganate is the one that gives the color and in the final products there is nothing that is colored. Uh, the potassium permanganate is an oxidizing agent, the oxalic acid is a reducing agent, and the sulfuric acid creates the acidic conditions required for the reaction to proceed. During the reaction, the permanganate ion, which is purple, is reduced to manganese 2 plus, which is colorless. And this is the reaction that happens, and these are the hydrogens that are provided by the sulfuric acid. Now, how do reactions happen, and how can we speed them up or make them slower? Collision theory states that for a reaction to occur, particles must collide with correct orientation and sufficient energy. However, the number of collisions that are sufficient is very small, and this is the reason that the reactions don't happen instantly and take time. This is an example of an unsuccessful collision with not enough energy, and this is an example of a successful collision with enough energy. The reaction speed. One way to increase the speed of a reaction is to increase the concentration of the reagents. And this, because this results in more particles colliding, the reaction finishes faster. Now, this reaction is an autocatalytic, uh, autocatalysis reaction. This is because the manganese 2 plus ion that we said is produced uh, by the permanganate and the hydrogen cations reacts with the permanganate ion to create manganese 3 plus ions that are also colorless. So these reactions are happening simultaneously and this one is uh, reduced to, to manganese 3 plus, which is colorless, and this speeds up the discoloration. Our hypothesis. The first one is that adding more water slows down the reaction. And the second one is that adding more potassium permanganate decreases the time needed for the discoloration. And the third one, that adding more oxalic acid decreases the time needed for the discoloration. Sure. Our experimental equipment. We have distilled water, potassium permanganate with a minimum of 99.5% purity, oxalic acid that is a dehydrate with a minimum 99.5% purity, concentrated sulfuric acid, beakers, volumetric flasks, graduated cylinders, timers, scales, steel bar, and thermometer. These are some photos of the sulfuric acid, the distilled water, the timer, the funnel, the thermometer, the steel bar, the scale, the beakers, and the graduated cylinder. Uh, the variables for the experiment one, the independent is the water volume, the dependent is the time until discoloration, and the constants are the temperatures, 25 degrees Celsius, checked by thermo the thermometer, the amount of reagents, and the steel bar rotation speed. Uh, our procedure, we created two aqueous solutions, one of potassium permanganate with 0.1 molarity, and one of oxalic acid with 0.1 molarity. We added to a beaker 100 milliliters of two, and the amount of water we were testing with. We created solution three by mixing 10 milliliters of solution one with the permanganate and 10 milliliters of the concentrated sulfuric acid. We quickly poured all of the solution three into the beaker, put the steel bar inside, turned it on, and started the timer. When the solution discolored, it became transparent, we stopped the timer and recorded the time elapsed. We did six trials for each amount of water. 
Uh, these are some photos of the weighting of the oxalic acid, the weighting of the potassium permanganate, uh, the, the starting uh, color and the final color. And this is the graph that was produced from our results. We can see it at each uh, volume of water, we have uh, the amount of time in minutes. Uh, we, we also, uh, using a polynomial regression, we created an equation so we could answer to the second part of the problem if the opponent asks us for a specific time, uh, we could solve the equation and give them the amount of water needed. Our results, our hypothesis is confirmed. The variables in the second one is the amount of potassium permanganate, the time until the discoloration is dependent, and we have the same constants uh, and extra the total volume. We created two aqueous solutions, one of the, uh, uh, one the oxalic acid with 0.1 molarity, we created an aqueous solution 2 of potassium permanganate by mixing 100 milliliters of water and the amount of moles by converting them to grams we wanted to test. We added to a bitter 300 milliliters of one and we created solution 3 by mixing solution 2 and 10 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. We quickly poured all of solution 3 into the bitter, put the stir bar inside, turned it on and started the timer. When the solution discolored, we stopped the timer and recorded the time elapsed. We did six trials for each amount of potassium permanganate. These are our results, and our hypothesis is confirmed. In the third uh, experiment, the independence is the amount of oxalic acid, and the dependence is the time until discoloration, and we have the same constants as the, as the second experiment. We created an aqueous solution of potassium permanganate with 0.1 molarity. We created an aqueous solution 2 of oxalic acid by mixing 100 milliliters of water and the amount of moles by converting to grams we wanted to test. We created solution 3 by mixing 25 milliliters of solution 1, that is the one with potassium permanganate, and 10 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. We put the, st the stir bar inside solution 2, we poured all of solution 3 into solution 2, turned on the stir bar and started the timer. When the solution discolored, we recorded the time elapsed. We did six trials for each amount of oxalic acid. These are our results uh, in, the, in a graph. So our hypothesis is confirmed. As a conclusion, all of our hypotheses were confirmed. The possible errors is the purity of the reagents, although it was high enough, the human error when stopping the timer, the accuracy of the scale, and because potassium permanganate is photosensitive, it could have minimally <coughs> degraded during the transfer to the volumetric flask. Also, some solution might have remained at the graduated cylinder. This is our bibliography. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Very good. So it's time for the clarifying questions of the opponent to the reporter. You have three minutes starting now. Okay, so first I would like to thank you for your presentation. Uh, and I have some clarifying questions in order to clear some things up. Uh, in the start of the presentation, you mentioned amounts of the reagents added. So you said, for example, uh, at the top in of In the head, theory or in the, in the experiment? Uh, yes, uh, while you were explaining this uh, autocatalysis, you said uh, two potassium permanganates and the same for the other uh, reagents. Maybe this one. Uh, okay, so yeah. is it two of what? Two moles. Two moles. Yes. Okay, so uh, the moles are related to the concentration of the, solu of the aquatic solution, correct? Yes. Okay, so if, uh, since, the, uh, uh, since the concentration of the aquatic solutions are not mentioned, how are you sure about the, uh, the moles? We mentioned them in the experiment. 0 0.1 molarity, 0 0.1 molarity, and in all the experiments we... Okay, uh, how about uh, the concentration uh, in relation to the water, so uh, in a percentage? Uh, molarity is the mole of the solute divided by the volume of the water. Okay. So it is in relation to okay, the water. Okay, thank you. Uh, could I see the hypothesis, please? Yes. The hypothesis. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so where did you base hypothesis two and three? So how two did and you three. come up uh, with in, the, in this slide, that increasing the concentration increases the speed of the reaction and fin makes the reaction finish faster because there are more frequent collisions. Okay, so uh, did you figure out, uh, out of uh, your graphs, uh, a direct relation with them? So, um, uh, what did you a, say? A direct relation yes. between uh, the increased concentration 
And the time yes, you did for in this one, for so example, that we increase the amount of potassium permanganate, which increases the concentration because we keep the same amount of water, we can see that if we increase the amount, the time is less. Okay, about the possible errors, because you mentioned uh, the minimum purity of the reagents. Do you think that the minimum purity, uh, the po every possible minimum purity of the reagents in combination with the reaction time needed for you to, uh, to, uh, for you to uh, count the time needed for the solution to discolor in combination with a possible uh, minor inaccuracy of the scale could have affected the results? Not to a significant effect. For, first of all, the purity of the reagent was uh, very high. Uh, usually the reagents are 95% pure. Uh, we use 99.5% pure. If we, we couldn't find 100%, it would be way too expensive. Okay. Lastly, also, uh, how did you come up with the equation for uh, the second part of the problem? Uh, in which graph? The equation for the uh, second yes, part of the problem. We had three equations for each one, no, each one for each graph. Uh, not the graphs, the equation for the second part of the problem, of this the problem statement. This equation. And no, I'm not talking about this, I'll talk about this. Finish your equation. statement. Thank you. All right, so it's preparation time for the opponent. Three minutes. Keep it quiet, please, starting now. Quiet, please. Quiet. Let's keep the noise level down. And this is the end of your preparation time. Are you ready to start? Uh, okay, you can st we can start the timer. Statement of the opponent. Four minutes starting now. Opponent.
Okay, the jury, shall we take a vote? Shall we reset the timer? Yeah, okay, let's reset the timer. Okay, are we ready to start? Okay, uh, this is the team of the opponent, statement of the opponent, four minutes beginning now. Okay, hello everyone, my name is Robert Kies and I'll be Shh. presenting the opposition statement for, I'll be presenting the opposition statement for problem number one, chemical countdown. First of all, a general outline of the presentation. We believe that the introduction to the phenomenon was great, uh, with the viewers who could get a good image of, the, of most of the theoretical part, uh, but some theory was lacking. Uh, about the hypothesis, uh, we believe that uh, they had a poor variety of hypotheses, and some of them could have been uh, a bit more explanatory. Uh, also, the experimental setup was great uh, because they portrayed a lot of instrument and apparatus, all of which, all of which was used in the experiments. 
the experimental procedure was not so great though. We believe that the, uh, there were some flaws that could have affected the results. And lastly, uh, the deductions were average because they were affected by the experimental procedure. Now, pros and cons for the theory and the introduction. For the pros, uh, the theory was detailed and understandable, especially in the reactions part, as I mentioned before. And also, photos and diagrams were present in order to help us get a better image of the theory. Okay, for the cons now, uh, no theory about how the water could have affected the reaction, just the hypothesis about that. So we think some more theory on that part could have been better for us to understand uh, the third hypothesis, uh, the first hypothesis, I'm sorry. And also no theory about the, co the concentration. For the experiments and results, enough data about the experimental setup, we believe that was complete. Uh, also, they showed photos of experimental setup, uh, as I mentioned in the brief uh, outline of the presentation. Uh, they used graphs to explain results. Uh, that is really important uh, for us to uh, be able to comprehend the results better. Uh, and lastly, they made many attempts for every experiment. Uh, there were not too many, but they were sufficient in our opinion. Also, uh, we believe that more photos of the experimental procedure, not the setup, could have been uh, included uh, with the actual solutions. And also, uh, we believe that the, the hypothesis uh, range was poor as they all focused on just the concentration and the adjustment of either one reagent or the water. Now, some suggestions for further improvement. We would like to see more photos of the procedure uh, in order to be able to get an image of the actual solutions. Uh, we also would like to see more theory about the hypothesis. This is focused especially on the hypothesis that uh, talks about adding water with a concentration. And also we would like to uh, make the points more, uh, more easily understood. They were kind of vague in some parts. And lastly, we would like to include original hypothesis that do, not, uh, that do not have basically the same conclusion every time. And now time for the discussion. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's get the reporter to the stage. And we have a discussion between the opponent and the reporter. Five minutes when you're ready. Five minutes starting uh, now. Okay, uh, thank you for your uh, great presentation. But I would like to point something out first. Uh, you agree that all your hypotheses were based and dependent Quiet, on please. the concentration, right? Yes, but it were different concentration. The, okay. tot the first one was for okay, the total. You. Th but uh, you didn't and show... Also about the, uh, you said that I didn't have theory about the water. If you know what concentration is, that it's the okay. mole of the solvent okay, by the I'll total volume. My, I'll explain my point. Uh, about, the, about the concentration, that all the experiments were highly dependent on it. You didn't, the you problem didn't actually, statement says about the concentration. Okay, uh, let me finish, please. Only. Let me finish my question. You, you, did not have, uh, you did not show the way you calculated the, concent uh, the concentration, which would include uh, the amount of water in each solution. But I said that uh, we mixed 100 milliliters of water with the amount of moles we wanted to test, and I had the okay, moles. But, but the, moles is, is the moles are not the amount uh, yes, but if you have 100 moles and that uh, uh, moles, you can divide them and find the concentration. Okay, but the moles are dependent on that solution itself, so they should be calculated after you've mixed the uh, reagent with the no, water. No, I made different solutions for this experiment, which means that in the first experiment I had the concentration, I, I, create, I put the moles required, I, I, I had the concentration required so that in 100 milliliters okay, okay, you thank, have that thank moles. You, thank you. Also, about the second part of the, uh, of the experiment statement, that uh, stated that the reporter should be able. Uh, yes, that's to, uh, achieved to by the by the, the reagent. This was, this is achieved by the equations that yeah, we got it, from the graphs. This, uh, that was the, the equation I was talking about. So the graphs uh, were uh, were after uh, the the equation. So uh, how are they related? Also, did, uh, no, did no, you have wait, you're misunderstanding. Not the chemical equation. In its graph. Wait, I'm not talking about the graph equations. I'm yes, talking about the, graph, the equation. There is an equation here. Okay, I'm, I'm talking about the equation uh, um, needed to in order to fulfill the second part of the problem. Yes, statement. if you solve this, if you set this equal to the to the mi to the minutes you wanted to discolor, it will give you the amount of milliliters of water. Okay, if you but, solve it. Okay, sorry, but the problem did not require uh, the milliliters of water. It required the time interval. So yes. I believe that the, the equation uh, is wrong. Uh, also, wait, uh, the statement did, said. Did you have a way of proving the equation? 
It's, How's it, the it's an experimental equation because this is an experimental competition. We can't just get an equation from See, the theory. Here, okay. Yes. Thank you. But but here it says uh, so that the matrix colors after the time interval specified. But you're yes. You can, so, so for example, if you say that you want it in ten minutes, I can go here in the first. No, you want the concentration. Okay. Set this equal to ten. Solve for x, and x is the amount of moles of potassium permanganate you need to put. Okay, thank you. But uh, can you go please to the statement again? The statement, please. To adjust. Okay, the amounts of reagents, is it, is not always related to the concentration. So a smaller amount of reagent, if, if uh, diluted in more water, Yes, but this we could, could, the this water was kept constant in the second and the third hypothesis. What, sorry? The Repeat. water in the second and the third hypothesis was kept constant. Okay, but uh, if I wanted to specify an amount of reagent, then yes. uh, then that does not necessarily mean if I wanted to, let's say, uh, uh, two, see, 200, for, uh, here, 200 they, they grams all of had 100 milliliters. So if you wanted to specify in 10 minutes, solve this and dilute this amount in 100 milliliters. Okay, about the hypothesis part, uh, do you believe that the range is poor? Because each hypothesis basically said the same thing. The no, I don't believe it tests the same thing. This, the first hypothesis, tests the overall concentration. This one tests the concentration of the potassium permanganate, which to some, for example, some of my team members thought that this could d increase the time needed because it had more potassium permanganate. Okay, but according, but to, according to your theory, it decreased. So why did your team members uh, not follow, no, not it's follow just, the it, theory? It, no, uh, I'm not meaning that. I said that they are different. Okay, the, but all, all hypotheses are related to the concentration. Uh, yes. Okay, so why didn't you have a... Oh, different concentrations. This is for the yes. concentration of oxalic, for the potassium. But this let's is say, the total. why didn't you try to, uh, to uh, come up with a hypothesis uh, for if you see the statement, to, to increase the time interval of yes, the discoloration? Yes, but if you see the statement, it says that you can change the amount of reagents. So the concentration, if you keep the water constant, which we also tested the water in the first hypothesis. Okay, so why didn't so we can't go out of the problem statement? Why it's didn't specific. You, why didn't you test uh, a, a possibility where the water, well, the water was increased? You could still have the same concentration, but maybe because of the volume of the mixture, there could have been other results. What no, do you think? it is the, if, uh, in my theory, it says that if you keep the concentration constant, the time will be the same. Okay. So you also put more uh, of the, all of the reagents and more water uh, proportionally, it would stay the same. Okay, so... Uh, your Finish your statement, your okay. time is Why up. Why are your graphs not linear? Because okay, well, the there is no time for this discussion. Furthermore, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so thank you for the discussion. Now it's time for the reviewer. Clarifying questions to both a reporter and opponent on the stage. Two minutes starting uh, now. Uh, can we pause it? Okay, pause the timer. Reset the timer. Uh, we, we don't uh, she doesn't have a microphone. Okay, quiet please. Quiet please. Quiet please. Are you ready to start? Okay, we're starting the timer. All right, thank you both for your presentation, but I do have some questions for both of you. Uh, first of all, to the reporter, do you think that the humidity could play a role on your experiment? No, it doesn't play a role because humidity is in the air and the reaction happens not, not on the air, it's not a gas. But the air cannot affect the results. No, the humidity of the air, okay. the water cannot uh, get inside. Uh. All right, thank you. Um, for the opponent, you said that the theory was not connected with the second and the third hypothesis. What would, more would you like to see in the theory about that? Uh, I corrected myself. It was about the first hypothesis with, with the water. So they didn't explain about the dil uh, dilution of the solution, how it could have affected okay, the Okay, thank you. Um, uh, for you, reporter, 
Uh, the timer was uh, based on human. Um, yes. You were the ones that stopped it. Do you think that this is an accurate way of... Uh, this was actually, we thought about that, but it's not inaccurate because due to the autocatalysis we mentioned in the theory, the last part of the reaction happens extremely quickly because there are a lot of manganese two plus ions. So there is no possibility that the human could see that it's a little bit purple, it's transparent. It becomes transparent immediately. So don't you think a tracker would be better for this since it's so quickly? Yes, but All right, we, thank we, we you. could use that. Yeah, then. thank you, I'm covered. Um, why, um, I would like to ask you, in your theory, uh, you mentioned the autocatalysis. Can you explain yes. what that is? Autocatalysis, uh, in, we go to, to this reaction. Uh, this one is composed of manganese 2 plus ions and this ion. Uh, yes, it's manganese 2 plus ions. However, then the manganese 2 plus ions can react with the permanganate and uh, oxidize it to manganese 3 plus. So, uh, this reaction happens simultaneously with the other one and speeds up the total... Uh, the so this the, is the, the auto-catalyst? Yes, this is the catalyst. Okay, thank you, I'm covered. Um, opponent, but once again... It. We don't um, put it inside, it's produced. All right, thank you. Um, uh, mm, this again. is the end of your okay, time. Thank you. thank you very much. Okay, preparation of the reviewer. Two minutes, please keep it, keep the noise down, please. The noise down, please. Quiet, please. Quiet. Quiet, please. Quiet, quiet please. When you're ready. I'm Elena Zaftarov okay. from Team Gravity's Cube, and today we'll be... Statement by the reviewer, beginning now, three minutes. Hello everyone, I'm Elena Zaftarov from Team Gravity's Cube, and today I will be the reporter for problem number one, Chemical Countdown. I believe we are all familiar with the problem to be investigated, so let's move on. First of all, I would like to comment on the reporter. Thank you for the, your presentation. It was great. Um, you had enough terms for reliability. They were six. You were well of your possible errors, and you mentioned them, which was great for us. You included the equation with, along with the graph in the second uh, results. And you explained the chemical reaction between the, uh, the chemicals thoroughly and the collision theory. But you did have some weaknesses that we would like you to improve on. First of all, you did not take into consideration important parameters such as air pressure and humidity, which can affect the, um, the rate of the reaction. Um, also, you did not um, mention important definitions such as catalyst and autocatalyst for the better uh, understanding of the audience. Most of the possible errors could be controlled, but you did not control them. Um, there was no con connection between the theory and hypothesis number one, which was, was with the water volume. You did not mention how the equation of the sec second experiment was formed, and there was no analysis of the second experiment results, but only when you were asked. Now for the opponent, thank you as well for your presentation. Um, you uh, questioned the reporter on the equation for the second graph, and a lot of things that you um, pointed out were good. Uh, you made the good point about the water volume uh, as well that we agree with. 
and you also spoiled some basic flaws in the presentation and experiments. However, you also did have some weaknesses. First of all, you failed to notice the significant lack in controlled variables. As we said before, we can talk about, uh, and you can ask me if you want later. You pointed out incorrectly that uh, the two hypotheses uh, are not uh, relevant, even though you corrected yourself later. You asked questions about the molecules that were already answered in the presentation, uh, so we believe that uh, this was lack of focus, and you, uh, your suggestions and critiques were very vague, and they, we believe that the report needs more specific to improve. Next. So discussion topic number one. Um, the opponent said that all the hypotheses are basically the same, and the reporter said that they are all different and it's based on theory, and we agree with the reporter. The discussion topic number two, please. Um, the opponent said that uh, they did not show the way that they calculated the concentration, even though it was mentioned in the theory of the reporters, and hence we agree with the reporter. And for topic number three, the opponent said that water temperature should be measured and that it is important, and the reporter did in fact uh, not only talk about it in the theory, but they also measured it and keep it as a controlled variable, so we do agree with the reporter here as well. Now, some points for further improvement for both. Uh, the reporter could take into consideration factors such as humidity or air pressure that could uh, affect the uh, rate of the reaction, connect all hypotheses to the theory, and now the opponent, you could try not only focusing on specific things, but the theory as a whole, the presentation as a whole. And lastly, you could pay more attention to important control variables, as I said, for the reporter as well. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get some concluding remarks from the opponent. The opponent to the stage, please. You have one minute, starting now. Now for my concluding remarks. First, I would like to deeply apologize uh, to the teams as well, the judges, uh, if, the if the technical difficulties caused any uh, disturbances. I also believe that I could have expanded uh, furthermore uh, on the human error possibility, despite me mentioning it in the clarifying questions, as well as it being included in the reporter's presentation. Also, uh, I could be mistaken, but I'm not sure I discussed the temperature uh, with the reporter, as the reviewer mentioned in their statement. And lastly, uh, the reviewer mentioned the lack of uh, control of variables in the reporter's statement, and that I did not point it out. But I, I, uh, uh, I remember that the reporter's statement did indeed include control of variables. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. And concluding remarks from the reporter. One minute, starting now. Hello. Thank you all for your presentations. I think we conducted an accurate experiment while controlling all the relevant parameters. And the pressure mentioned by the reviewer affects only reactions with gases, and humidity also reactions with gases. The opponent said that the dilution is not mentioned in the theory, but if he understood concentration, he could see the, concentra he could he see the connection because more water equals less concentration. The equation was created using polynomial uh, regression with degree of 2 with the data points. We did not uh, use higher degree to not overfit our data. We, we could not get outside the problem statement to create more original hypotheses. Otherwise, we would, have, uh, men we would have tested putting some manganese 2 plus ions inside to speed up the autocatalysis process and the whole reaction. Thank you all for the presentations. I will take the suggestions of the opponent and the reviewer into account. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now let's have uh, clarifying questions from the jury. If any. Not from you. Not from you. On this side. Clarifying questions from the jury. Everything is clear. <laughs> okay, well, let's get to the grading then.
quiet please Quiet please, the jury is working. Filled and signed. The jury is ready. Now let's show the grades for the team of the reporter. I will read from the right to the left. Showing now. Right to the left. 22, 26, 26, 20. 6, 24, 23, 24, and 24, second time, right to the left, 22, 26, 26, 26, 24, 23, 24, and 24. The jury will show the grades for the team of the opponent.
Are we ready? Starting from the right to the left, the grades for the opponent. We have 12, 14, 13, 13, 17, 13, 13, and 14. Once again, right to the left. <clears throat> 12, 14, 13, 13, 17, 13, 13, and 14. Thank you. Okay, let's give a big round of applause to all of you. And this is the end of our third, this is the end of our third round of the final battle. Oh, we have the review. That's right. I keep forgetting that. That's the important part also. Sorry. <laughs> right. Right to the left for the reviewer. Let's see the grades. Right to the left. Nine. Eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, eight, and eight. Once again, right to the left. Nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, eight, and eight. Thank you very much. This concludes our battle. Now we have apostles here who will conclude. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ όλους. Ηλεκτρά. Τελείωσε ο αγώνας. Ποιος κέρδισε; Δεν ξέρω. Θέλεις να μάθουμε; Ωραία. Σε λίγο ξεκινάμε την τελετή λήξης. Μπράβο σε όλους.